This is part four in the series of plotting vapor liquid equilibrium. Specifically, I have focused on using the visualization options available to me to try to identify and understand the phase behavior, specifically the vapor liquid phase behavior, of the system of interest. In part one of this series, I focused on using the plot TPXY function to arrive at a representation of the isopropanol water homogeneous azeotrope. In part two, I focused on the visualization options to help me diagnose a misspecification I made in the phase behavior criteria to properly arrive ultimately at the benzene water phase behavior showing a heterogeneous azeotrope. In part three, I focused on the isopropanol benzene homogeneous azeotrope, noting how the azeotrope changed with the presence of water. Here, 5% water and then 10% water. I noted in part three that there was a boundary that was limiting the impact of water. I want to explore that in part four. In order to do that, I go to plot, binodal residue curve. I have to input anything that is described as green, noting that benzene and water exhibit the heterogeneous azeotrope, and noting that benzene is more volatile than water. I choose benzene as the first component, water is the third component, and by default isopropanol, which is miscible with both, as the second component. I've been doing my calculations of phase behavior at 20 psi, so I put that in for the residue curve. I want seven lines on each axis to allow me to better understand how a distillation might proceed. I'm particularly interested in the region near this benzene isopropanol azeotrope, so I'd like to have a residue curve go through a point near the azeotrope that occurs with 5% water. I'm going to plot this as mole fraction on an equilateral triangle because I know that the benzene isopropanol homogeneous azeotrope is at about 170 degrees Fahrenheit at 20 psi. I want to calculate the binodal plot at 170 degrees. This is a combination of a residue curve and a binodal curve. This is a standard triangular diagram with the faces of benzene, isopropanol, and water. Some points of interest. First is the isopropanol water azeotrope. Second is the benzene isopropanol azeotrope. And third is the vapor composition of the heterogeneous azeotrope between benzene and water. Note that these points, that is in this case the heterogeneous azeotrope, connects up with the ternary azeotrope. This gives you an indication on a residue curve that we have certain areas beyond which we cannot distill. For example, if we had a feedstock in this area, we would anticipate that the bottoms would approach pure isopropanol and the overhead would approach pure azeotrope. Let's look at the benzene isopropanol face. Here's the azeotrope, which you recall is about 45% isopropanol. We add 5% water, which moves us on the graph here, which is nominally 5% water, 24% isopropanol, and the remainder benzene. This 
you recall was the azeotrope that existed with the 5% water. Now, why is there a barrier? Why does there essentially no impact when I went to 10% water? Well, adding 10% water to this composition, that is the approximate azeotrope, is essentially moving along the mixing line from this point down to the apex of pure water, which is nominally parallel to the tie line that exists at this point. And so consequently, the 10% water point, which might be approximately here, breaks up into two liquid phases, one that's awfully close to the 5% point, and then nominally nearly pure water at the bottom. But the point is that the exact liquid phase that I get at 10% water and 5% water are essentially the same, and that's why there's not a shift in the apparent azeotrope, or if you will, the apparent vapor composition when I move from 5% water to 10% water. So what I've shown you in the, these four parts is a way to use the visualization options available to you in ChemCAD to help you understand, diagnose, and explain performance based on the phase equilibria. This tip showed you how to plot binodal residue curves. Thank you for using ChemCAD. For more tips, please visit ChemStations.com. My name is Chip Howitt.